Hey, good evening, everyone. I guess there's no one watching yet, but you'll see this in the recording as well. So again, we're looking at the relationship between Buddhism and nature. And so the second way of um, looking at nature from a Buddhist perspective is I think in terms of uh, what we say in English, the nature of things, or human nature, or even just things as having a nature. As having a an existence, a presence. And so I'll explain what I mean by that one. It's maybe a little hard to understand. But the nature of things, the nature of things that relates to our Uh, our, our understanding of things being stable, being constant, predictable, dependable, static. Right, so what is the nature of things? Well, physics will tell you things about the nature of things and so on. Science has much to say. Buddhism has much to say. But we go far beyond that is, I think, an issue that we have to face and, and understand in Buddhism. Is that we take, uh, well, nature, you know, again, the... the the inspiration of these few talks was the concern for our environment, for the climate, for nature as a concept, as a as a thing to be protected and concerned about, and a thing that is being destroyed by human greed and uh, corruption by us. We're destroying nature in many ways. Uh, but that's... Um, so, uh, so another thing that we have to look at in that regard is that being a part of nature. You know, the nature of things is to be changeable. Is that this concept of nature, the trees, the mountains, the weather, the air, the water, is all malleable. It doesn't have a nature. If anyone asks you about nature, when you go out into the forests or to the seaside and you talk about how how peaceful and how calming and how wonderful nature is, that that kind of nature, this nature as a thing, as, a, as opposed to the human, it's just a concept in our minds, and, and the reality is changing. Yeah. Reality is susceptible to change. There's no such thing as the nature of things in that sense. Our ideas of the nature of things give us mm, a sense of stability that is illusory, that isn't there. I mean, part of the suffering from climate change is going to be the, 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 the simple change, having to deal with change. And sometimes the change is so drastic that it leads to, to direct suffering, flooding and wildfires, tornadoes, uh, simple drought and loss of livelihood and so on. But in general, speaking in general, our illusions about the nature of things 
things having a nature is a cause for great suffering, needless suffering. Whereas if we could see the changing nature of things. Human nature as well, I mentioned that. It's important to talk about because we think of human nature as being stable, static. I'm an angry person. I'm a depressed person. What did I read about depression? Uh, we, no, one of our uh, professors or uh, someone in the university recently said that uh, there's only a 25% difference between uh, the effects of medication and the effects of a placebo for people with moderate or mild depression. Um, I mean, so we talk about being depressed. I have depression and we think of it as an illness, as a disease, as something to be treated with medication due to what we call a chemical imbalance. Um, you know, chemical imbalance is something static. You can't, you can't um, wish it away, right? It's a part of who you are. And yet we find that these medications that are meant to uh, change that chemical imbalance are not nearly as effective as they as we would think, or they're not much more effective than. In some case, in, in some sense, just wishing it away. You know, the placebo effect. I mean, the effects of meditation would be quite similar, I think, to the placebo effect in terms of changing the state of mind. The human nature is malleable. Um, someone else recently said that up until recently we thought the mind was was static, that after seven years old... Um, the brain didn't change. And of course, we know that's false. That's false. You adult brains can change, are malleable. And so calling it a disease and thinking of it as a part of you, a part of who you are, is in, in, incorrect. You know, who you are, your human nature, is malleable, is changeable. Is impermanent. I mean, even our physical nature is impermanent. This body is just a shell or a husk or um, like a sandcastle that we build up. Think of those nine months in the womb that we spend uh, kneading and molding and tweaking. No, not of course. You can't. You can't say that the mind created the fetus, but certainly had a played a part those nine months in tweaking it. And and of course throughout life tweaking as well, changing. And this physical form is also temporary. So the true nature of things. So the question is, you know, is there a true nature of things? Is there something that is stable and constant? And there is something that is, uh, you can say, is always the nature of things. And the nature of things is to change. And that's that's more than just a, a clever th thing to say, because of course it's it's basically saying that the nature of things is to not have a, a constant nature, right? But it's more than that, because understanding of impermanence, understanding of the unpredictable nature of things is a stable state, the understanding of it, I mean. When you understand that law of nature, that aspect of nature, it's a very powerful thing. It changes the way you look at the world, it changes the way you interact with the world. It allows you to let go, to be free from the suffering that comes from change, right? 
So it is a, an important, stable reality to understand thoroughly so that you gain the stability of understanding. The stability that comes from being able to adapt. The, the stability of flexibility in a sense. Understanding impermanence, understanding suffering, the suffering that comes from from clinging to things. Right? If everything is changing, then clinging to stability, clinging to something is like clinging to a raft in the fast-moving river. You just get swept away. Clinging to clinging to a sinking ship. The thing about being flexible is not clinging. Flexibility implies, or the adaptability, or the, the understanding of impermanence, implies a lack of attachment. So we hear about non-attachment in Buddhism, and not clinging, and not wanting, or craving, or even liking anything. And yes, it implies that. It implies that happiness can't come from clinging or or craving, can't, holding on to anything, liking anything. It can't come from things. Your happiness has to be independent of things, things that whose only nature is to change. Understanding of non-self, that you can't control things. You can't stop this process. The process of change is not me, it's not mine. In fact, in fact, our, our struggle to be satisfied, to find pleasure, changes things themselves changes ch changes things right creates impermanence not only not only does it create suffering because of change but it creates change so i'm thinking now again back to the the idea of the environment as i mentioned in the last video our craving our clinging think of an addict an addict gains pleasure from a drug, which of course changes the brain, makes it harder to get pleasure from the same drug, and leads to greater and greater addiction. This is true with so many things. I mean, it's true with any addiction, to even simple things like food, television, music. The brain is elastic, and you change the brain. Not only do we change our brains, we change our environment our incessant drive to find pleasure and satisfaction is changing the world around us. It's destroying the environment. Even our consumerism, our consumption of water, our consumption of oil, plastic, all of these things, which is why I think it's fair to say Buddhists should be environmentally conscious in terms of um, understanding the relationship between our greed and our suffering, you know, the, the suffering caused by an environment that's degraded. Our clinging, our craving, even our control, our intent to, to our drive to control, to um, cling, to, to maintain, cling to stability. All of that is creating destruction, it's creating stress, it creates systems that oppress uh, other beings, oppress other humans. We create suffering because we don't see the nature of things. We don't see that we, our uh, behavior causes suffering. There is a nature of things. It's quite simple in that way. 
starts with impermanence, really is the, the cornerstone of it all. Being impermanent, nothing is satisfying. You can't find satisfaction or happiness in things. And that being so, they, they are not me, they are not mine, they are not under my control. The idea of self is just a delusion. The idea of me and mine are, are a trap that leads us only to greater suffering. So, there you go, more on the nature of things, more on Buddhism and nature. One more video, one more aspect of nature, I think. And then we'll be done with that. Again, I'm not making videos that often. I don't know when the next one will be. And I expect that uh, in the new year I'll be making more videos. Maybe even next month. But this month is um, somewhat occupied with other things. So... Thank you all. Have a good night. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. 43 people, spur of the moment on a Wednesday night. I very much appreciate it. So have a good night. Wish you all the best.